Hey Moonies, welcome to the Sailor Moon Fan Club Podcast. I'm your host, Victoria L. Johnson, and I'm here with Dimple and Hijinx. They are the founders of Sailor Boom Party, which is super cool. I actually had the chance to watch Hijinx spin at the 2019 Girl Gamer Night, and she killed it. Shout out to Land Party Productions, who hosts that, by the way. And I listened to Dimple during their Sailor Zoom party last year. And so, as you can tell, I am a fan. Um, they also started Cause for a Cause, uh, which we'll talk about later. Also super cool thing. Um, and I'm super excited to talk to them. Like, they have been people that I wanted to have on the show for a really long time. So I'm happy we're finally doing it. And welcome, Sailor Boom Party. Hey. Hi. Thanks for having <laughs> us. Yeah. I love the high pitchness that we just like. <laughs> Yes. It, you know, Sailor Moon brings it out of people, I feel. <laughs> just pure cancer energy. Yes. Yes. Just like excited about everything. <laughs> um, so the first question I ask is, what's your first memory of watching Sailor Moon? Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, well, I'll go first. Uh, mm-hmm. I used to get home from school in the fourth grade and I would run in it would probably be like 3.30 and you just knew what time it was because 4 p.m. you had to turn on Cartoon Network because Sailor Moon was coming on. Like that was it. Like that was my life. That was what me and my brother did for, shoot, I'd say all four to five years of elementary school. Like it was a big deal for me, shoot. That's super cool. Was this Toonami? I'm guessing. Yeah, this yeah, this was mm-hmm. Toonami because I remember Toonami was coming on like mid like afternoon. Yeah. Something like that. Um but yeah, just like seeing these superheroes and the like the costume transitioning. It was just it was just everything. Yeah, it really is. And I'm so happy like your brother was running alongside with you because guys are Sailor Moon fans too. Mm-hmm. We need to stop that misconception. Oh, I wouldn't even <laughs> know about Sailor Moon if, if it wasn't for my brother. Like dead dead ass. Love it. Same here. My brother's the one who put me on. So 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 true. Love it. How, yeah, how about you? Um, so I also love that Sailor Moon was international because growing up in Australia, it actually came on in the mornings for me. So I'm from a family of five girls, but I'm the only morning person out of the kids. Um, And Sailor Moon used to come on at 7.30 a.m. And I would be awake, ready to go. And I would be the only one. So it was like this beautiful (laughs) moment where no one else in my household would be awake. I got to eat my cereal in peace. I got to watch my Sailor Moon. And I think Pokemon would come on right afterwards. So it was like... Now that I'm thinking about an amazing way to start your day as a kid. Um, And then we'd obviously come on and have a bunch of other shows in the afternoon. Um, And I think the extra layer for Sailor Moon was that my older sister, Jen, who I'm not super close with, but I always have like a lot of respect for. Sailor Moon was her favorite anime or I guess cartoon because I didn't really know the difference growing up. And so just in order to be a bit more like her, I was like, I have to like this. And thankfully, it's such a great show that that wasn't hard. Yeah, it's it's so good. Oh, that's so cool. I never I always love to hear about like how Sailor Moon reached international fans too because it's just so different from what you know you always hear. And oh yeah, and yeah, like it's crazy because I feel sometimes with memories from your childhood, like it's almost like you can see the scene like you're outside of your body. Like I can so clearly yep. see where I yeah. sat down at my breakfast table eating yep. it. And then I can also like, cause you know, there were so many different variations of it and like extensions. And I can also just literally see my body sitting on the floor, like on my knees in the afternoons with like the TV right there and Sailor Moon was playing. And it's just insane that you can remember it that way. I always feel like it's like also usually like one of the happiest memories I have. Mm, I don't know yeah. I mean. Like when I think back to it, I'm like, man, I was just like happy. Like right. sitting there watching yeah. Sailor Moon. You like, can always remember that first episode of when like she figures out and like her homegirl's mother runs the jewelry store but yes you know, mm-hmm. being, you know incepted by whatever demon crystal demon person like and, everybody remembers that episode with the tiara like yeah, you just know yeah. what that is and, like, and and i feel like usagi wears the crown when it comes to that whole scene of waking up late and stressing everyone in our household out <laughs> And then running out the door like i just feel Love like no one's done it better right no one's that. done it better no <laughs> one's done it better with the toast in the mouth like who who else yes. who, who else, else? 
<laughs> yeah, and you kind of make me want to start my mornings now with like cereal and watching Sailor Moon. Like, why we ever changed the formula? It worked. I don't know why I switched it up Makes and decided no to jump on Twitter the first. Like, that's that's <laughs> wrong. I don't need to be doing that. It's not a good way to start the day now. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how I start my day too. Like Instagram, Twitter. And now I'm like, yeah. you know what? No, I'm starting with Sailor Moon now. Exactly. Like, why are we trying to be sadistic over here? Don't know. Don't know. Makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I think hijinks, you kind of mentioned this, but just in case you have a different answer, what's your favorite episode or moment from Sailor Moon? Oh, we. Me being the queer ass bitch that I am, I love when Sailor, uh, Neptune, and Pluto were, uh, I mm-hmm. mean, uh, Sailor, Neptune, and Uranus were um, introduced. I love that episode when, uh, Sar- uh, sorry, Usagi and um, I can't think of Venus's name. Uh, um, Minako. Yeah, Minako. When they're trying to figure out whether or not Uranus is a boy or a girl, and then mm-hmm. at the end, yeah, <laughs> they're just like a girl, but who cares? And then they walk off into the sunset, and you're just also still delusional about whether or not they're in a relationship. Yeah, that it's they perfect. come in so epically. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I think that was also like as a child one of the first like. That was, like, probably one of my first, like, queer exposures, like, as a child. Yeah, a lot of uh, people say that for them, too. And I'm just so happy that it exists. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, and in that moment, that's also, like, for me, like, checking in with myself, knowing, oh, my God, this is, like, that's a thing. It's real and it happens. Yeah. and You know what I mean? Their relationship, I I feel like, is stronger more aspirational even than usagi and, and mamaru oh absolutely mm-hmm. yeah, like i'm like they are couple goals like i need that um but uh also like feel free to interchange between original dub and like japanese like all welcome <laughs> i know it's hard sometimes <laughs> we all grew up one way and you know oh, yeah. Just, yeah. back and forth between saying so yeah. and usagi i oh. go back and forth too <laughs> like i have <laughs> So the thing is, is that I I watched most of it in dub and I thought that was fine. Like, obviously the theme song, like I get all of that. And it was crazy because when Glenn and I were at Blurred Con in 2019, there were, there were so many Sailor Scouts and I mean, I'm sure we'll get into it, but for our parties and even personality wise, like Glenn is Sailor Moon, I am Sailor Mars. Like that's where we, that's where we balance each other out. Um, but we got there and there were like 20 Sailor Moons. And I tell you when I walked through and I was dressed up as Sailor Mars, like they were like, oh my God, we've been waiting for you. There is not one Sailor Mars at this convention. (laughs) Like we need you for the photos. And I was like, oh my goodness, of course. And then I got there and then they all started singing the theme song, but in Japanese. And I was like, oh, I need to get out of here before I'm found out. Oh my God, (laughs) slide away, slide away. Complete fraud. I'm going to send you this video. I have it saved in my IG archives. It's hilarious. She's just like, oh "Oh my God, you're just like moving your head back and forth. But when I tell you that like, it was like a family because they just brought me in and they were like, so now we're going to go into the elevator and we're just going to twerk our way down the elevator. Oh, okay. (sighs) Oh, the escalator. Sorry. I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. This is my family now. I don't need anyone else here. (laughs) That sounds so magical. Also, like, oh my God, that is, that's just so cool. Mm. That is so cool. But yeah, no. So Glenn and I tiptoe, I feel on the line of like, we love shit, but we're never going to tout ourselves as like, the the be all end all of the fandoms because we're like no we don't we don't want to we don't want to mislead people in that it's like we love it but but we're never going to say that we're the experts on it yeah Yeah. we're here to appreciate participate and elevate and Mm -hmm. do that but if you want to sit here and have me recite the whole you know fifth season in japanese it's not going to be me yeah i mean i feel like it's just not fun like you know <laughs> it's just like it's almost like well, what do you feel fun? about this and like well, we'll do this and here's a test and it's like i'm just a fan like i enjoy this like oh it's supposed God. to be fun because that mm-hmm. happened to you hijinks when you were doing one of your like you were on a podcast or a video oh, yeah, chat weren't you yeah i was on someone some of the boys ig live and like yeah they got a little bit of a following and they were trying to like Ask me some trick questions like who's Usagi's mom and like huh. all this stuff and like 
it was just stupid. And then, like, when I answered them, like, he was just, like, really surprised. And then, like, tried to tell me I was wrong. <laughs> That's so weird and whack. <laughs> like, yeah, like, what joy do you get out of this? You asked me to come on the show. You were asking me. <laughs> right. Like, why would you do that to somebody? <laughs> it's so crazy because it's, like, it's also this, like, subculture that, like, unfortunately we have to deal with. Like in the nerd blurred community of, you know, the masculinity feeling as though they know everything. And, you know, we just, at this point, we just need to laugh. Like, I, like, what, <laughs> what are you trying to prove here? Like, we're all human. We all have access to the same content. Like, I know I'm going to know just as much as you or more. It's not a battle of the sexes. Yeah. And it's sad because I, I usually say, all that, say, and I still feel like Sarah Moon fans are usually like the nicest people that you ever meet. But like, because yeah. like, even for people who do stuff like that, it's like, did you learn anything from this show? Because like, <laughs> you're going like doing that goes against like everything the show is about unless you're like on the side of queen barrel or something and you think like she's right or whatever yeah although i would love to see what that fandom look like like the queen barrel like in all excitement as if like that is where they stand like i would love to see what the antagonist to your podcast looks like with like the queen barrel (laughs) side that would be interesting like (laughs) we side with all villains and sailor moon <laughs> like oh they my were, god! <laughs> like yeah. that question instead is like, which villain do you identify with and why? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. Honestly, you know, some people do identify with villains, and you know, I think that's fine because even yeah. like the villains are pretty badass, um, yeah. as long as they don't agree with like wiping out the earth. <laughs> I think that's oh, I think their fashion choices are great. <laughs> it's like I'm just here to put a crystal in your body, make a piano monster out of it. Right. And then your be out. the way that you kill people is that is you bang on your keys and they shoot you know how they make people mm-hmm. become inanimate objects and shit. Mm-hmm. Oh yep. my can you imagine <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that would that would be very interesting yeah mm-hmm. that would be one day maybe <laughs> I'll have a, a, a nemesis podcast. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> Just to get out your dark side. I would love it. Oh, okay. Quick question. If you were if you were a, a Sailor Moon villain, who would you be? Mm. Oh, that is a good question. I mean, it's hard not to pick Sailor Galaxy just because she's I like... I was going to oh, say yes. that. Yeah. yeah. She's just so badass and super cool and like doesn't care. <laughs> about anything very true um i'm trying to think i was gonna say get a sailor galaxy yeah I mean, obviously pretty much anybody in the megaverse was uh out here yeah, yeah. like yeah and sailor chaos as well like the two of them mm-hmm. together terrifying terrifying yeah oh my gosh yeah cannot deal with that oh uh, i also really like uh like emerald from the black moon clan Mm. Um, but I don't like her ending. Uh, she gets like turned into the dragon or something, and yeah, that that wouldn't be fun. But everything before that, she was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good question. I might have to add that to my my repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> we're he- we're here to add just as much value, hopefully, to you as you're bringing to us. <laughs> yeah, it's it's working. <laughs> um, the dimple. What's your uh? favorite episode or moment from Sailor Moon. Yeah, I was thinking about this today. I mm-hmm. I loved as soon as they brought in the whole Princess Serenity and the Moon Kingdom story. Like, yes. it was just so nice to give a bit more depth to Sailor Moon's character because I felt like they kind of, like they, they brought her in as like the very ditzy school girl. And I feel like that's when they started really getting into her sad backstory and then giving her some meat and bones. So even though it was very sad, I loved seeing that episode. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I kind of also really love, like, even though she's an annoying character at times, like, <laughs> the whole Sailor Chibi Moon situation, like, I just thought it was so cute. <laughs> so I loved watching any episodes where her and Asagi were interacting. Um, but yeah, outside of that, I don't, I don't really know if I have anything else specific. But those were kind of, yeah, my favorite no, moments. That definitely works. And I, I love 
those two, like, when she turns into Princess Serenity, it's just so epic. And yes. uh, I think I mentioned it before on the podcast, but I'll say it again. Like, I feel like that was the first time I was kind of introduced to, like, lore and, like, those elements. Like, there's mm-hmm. a backstory for her character and, like, it's just more than, like, what they're presenting. Like, when I was watching, like, Hey Arnold, it was just like, oh, Hey Arnold. Except, yeah. like, they did the movie later on about his parents. And I was just like, oh. But... <laughs> But yeah, yeah. It and you and it's like this concept of like, oh, you were meant to be this the entire time. Like this was in your destiny. Mm-hmm. Like you had somebody that created this world for you and gave you your little cats and things like that. So, um, cats. <laughs> you know, it, it just reminds you. It's like, all right, so maybe it's not by accident that people get picked to be Sailor Moon. Like maybe it's okay that I'm not being picked because she <laughs> needed like somebody. You know, she needed a mum that was gonna like risk her life and then make that happen for us like and i'm fine with that all right i can i can accept this now <laughs> that's a nice way of looking at it i've never thought of that before i've always been sad that i wasn't picked to be so yeah i'm just like oh shit like you know that was that was creative for you that's that's sad for you because that's a lot of responsibility for a teenager the fact that they give teenagers this like task 14. of saving the world <laughs> a fresh 14 could you imagine i would have the world would have been blown up <laughs> <laughs> just done for like sorry y'all <laughs> i'm tired like, like, <laughs> not only am i tired but we are destined to die like yeah, I, true <laughs> and, I, and I'm i'd give it a good effort i'd yeah. give it a good effort because <laughs> yeah. because i know at 14 if i was trying to explain to my mom look i have to go save the world she's like but if it interferes with your grades you're not allowed to do that and i'd have to be like okay <laughs> Sorry, guys. Can't go out tonight. I have homework. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, they're like, no, oh, we really need after. you. I was like, yeah, but if I don't get an A, my mom is going to whoop my ass. So you understand <laughs> my dilemma here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, you know, balance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just balance. <laughs> um, I think you guys kind of answered this, but uh, who's your favorite sailor, Senshi? Um. Oh. I mean, I would say the one that I identify most with is Sailor Mars, but just because I'm a little bit straight line and I'm always looking at the logic behind things, like I don't run very much by my emotions and I'm always like picking people up and putting them back in line. So it's not who I would love to be, but I feel like it's who I am. Um, But in terms of my favorite, I love the concept of Sailor Saturn. Like, I like that. I like that she's like, I'm not even coming to the party until everyone has their shit together. Sorry. I <laughs> live for that. Yes. You know what and I mean? Like, and like, then I'm going to wreck shit. And, and, <laughs> and I just love the concept where she's like, everyone knows that she has a lot of power, but she doesn't use it. Like, that's perfect. Like, she's like, so everyone knows I can destroy whole planets, right? Like, we know this. Um, but I just don't feel like it. Like, you all aren't giving me the opportunity. It's not my fault that I'm not doing it. It's your fault. Like, I just love the whole concept of that existence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's a um, boss. <laughs> so I feel like I would definitely most identify with Sailor Moon. Um <laughs> I'm not a cancer, but I'm a cancer rising. So that just means like just off the bat, like I'm a crybaby. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, I can get through hard shit, but I'm gonna cry first. Um And that's okay. But But always a, comes a, through. But always yes, comes through. But always comes through. Mm-hmm the tears right. bring the um, energy <laughs> <laughs> um but i think the sailor scout that i mean i love the most yo sailor jupiter the way mm-hmm. she talks about all of her ex-lovers <laughs> is all of us <laughs> like, very relatable <laughs> like, she has an ex-lover for every day of the week yo like it's crazy but the one thing that I love about, you know, her talking about her broken hearts is that she always has respect for all of them. <laughs> like, yeah, like she always likes, like talks about them with love and not hate. And it just also kind of just wraps up, you know, wraps a bow around the energy of the show mm-hmm. and yeah. like what that message sends to the young lovers. Okay. You know? And so. I feel like if you had to be walking through the street and you could only pick one Sailor Scout to be walk, like if they had to protect you, it's Sailor Jupiter. Oh yeah, off the yeah. bat, like off the bat, that like yeah. you're like, all right, she doesn't, she doesn't need a lot of help. She's probably gonna kick someone's ass on her own. Yeah. Do you fact- do you do your little transformation thing? Handle this. <laughs> right. I mean, she can fight even without transforming, so I already feel secure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, I could transform and like bring 
lightning and thunder on you, but you know, just use my karate. And <laughs> yeah, and she and she throws it out there. She's like, before anyone does anything, she's like, all right, boom, let's stop this shit off with some lightning. Uh, let's make sure they know where we're coming from. <laughs> right, where we're starting. Yep. Here's our starting point. <laughs> in your face yeah these are all very solid answers i love it so much um and i love too because sometimes i ask people like who's your favorite and then who's like your like aspirational <laughs> yeah. one and i feel like that's that's what we did here because i love sailor moon too but like sailor neptune i like want to be her <laughs> yes she just Absolutely. just has her life together in a way that i don't <laughs> <laughs> i tried to have sailor neptune hair for like a year it just all broke off. <laughs> oh well, it was it was so sad. We were like before we knew the pandemic was was coming in. I don't know. We'll get to the party. Like Glenn and I really were trying to organize like a Sailor Neptune, Sailor Uranus situation, like oh. for for Pride Month. Like it was. <sighs> there were plans, man. There were next plans. year. Next year, yeah. Plans for the future. Mm-hmm. Which actually brings me to my next thing, because I was super sad, because I learned about Super Sailor Boom Party. Um, maybe you guys do a si- Super Sailor Boom Party, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> super Saiyan Sailor Boom Party. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but um, I learned about you guys, like, right when I moved away from New York, like, I was in D.C. for a bit, and I was like, oh my god, I want to go, and then, like, just never, like, lined up, and then I moved back to, like, around the New York area in January 2020. Oh, okay. So you're back. But you're back now. Yeah. I'm back now. And I was like, all right, next one, I'm going to be there. And then, of course, March 2020 Mm -hmm. happened. (laughs) And so, uh, but um, like you guys said, you know, we got got plans next Mm -hmm. year, later this year, hopefully. Um, So I will be there because I am back. Uh, (laughs) And we're all getting vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. I'm vaccinated too. So, you know, I'm I'm ready. are we? Yes, love it. Um, <laughs> Sailor vaccinated. Sailor Pfizer. Yes. No, in not the Sailor house. Pfizer. Sailor Moderna. Sailor Pfizer. My I love that. Main power is plasma. <laughs> Hit you with that plasma. Oh my yes. god! All right. Do you <laughs> like myself now? Self isolation bubbles. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! Could you imagine the Sailor Scouts doing a pandemic episode? <laughs> Like trying to fight coronavirus. Oh my gosh. That would I be mean, great. Really, it would just be them dismantling governments that don't care about their people. And so. you know what? Yeah. I want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> they need to just remake Sailor Moon, but like black. And then they can just dismantle like the yeah. entire. Right. Please. You know, Please. Just, like Did episode one, imagine? white supremacy. Episode two, capitalism. Yeah. Exactly. We need wow. we need to find some we need to find some fourteen year olds down for the cause. That's the only way. Mm-hmm. It's the only way. Yeah, they'll never see it coming. Oh my god, that would be so legendary. So somebody needs to pick uh pick that to adults swim. Yeah, I'd watch it. For Shoot. Sure. We're speaking to the public. Now somebody's gonna take my idea. Uh, you know, well, we, we, we have timestamps and you know, it'll it'll, it'll show that you said it first. Perfect. <laughs> That's all we ask. Yeah. Um, but I say all that, say this. Uh, how did Sailor Boom Party come about? Ooh, I love telling the story. Or do you want to okay. tell it? No, it's all on you, and I'll just chime in where I think okay. it's relevant. I literally, Tasha and I, so Dimple and I met back in 2014. Mm-hmm. I had just graduated college and I needed a job. So I walked into Dos Caminos Third Avenue and got a job and she was already working there. And ever since then, we became friends. Um, But after a year, uh, Tasha's visa was up, so she had to go back to Australia. Um, But within that year, she had taught me how to DJ. I would like come with her to all her gigs and like, like basically like Dimple's my DJ mother. But anyway, so when Tasha left, (laughs) like while she was back in Australia and we talked like every single day about the day she was going to come back and how we were going to throw parties in New York City. And so literally seven years later, she's back (laughs) and here for good. And we were like, yo, we need to throw a party. But we wanted to do something different because we kind of got, you know, 
the idea that all the parties that are you know happening in Brooklyn now or just in New York in general, it's just regular, you know, your regular of the mill party, but it's just like everything has to be based around like sex and all that shit. So we're just like, what if we just did a party that was based off of fandom or something like that? And I like, I didn't have the full idea yet, but I literally walked out of a great therapy session one day <laughs> and I got it. And I called Tosh and I was like, Tosh, I got it. We need to do a cosplay themed hip hop party. And it was over. Yeah. We're going to call it Sailor Boom. And it was over. <laughs> because uh, it was like, the thought of running a party where we just played music, we were like, but what is the pull here? And as much as like, we like to promote the fact that we're women and we're DJs, like, I don't know. It's just, I feel like you need to give people a reason to come outside. And when we were looking at what the market offers, it's like, you have cons that exist, but they're pretty inaccessible to regular, like, first off, they're super inaccessible to people that don't have the money to pay like anywhere between like 40 to a hundred dollars in expenses for cons plus after parties. Mm -hmm. where you where it's like socially acceptable outside of halloween to dress up and be around other people that are dressed up um and then also if you don't really classify yourself as a nerd or an anime fan or a cosplayer or you don't know what those words mean like you may not know that every halloween you get dressed up that's you cosplaying as a character like you might not just have heard that term and then you think it's reserved for people that go to Comic-Con, right? And so we were like, how can we do this like middle section where people don't feel like they need to like know everything, you know, because going into a con and feeling like you don't know the ins and outs of whatever fandom you support, like it's stressful. And you're like, what if someone, especially as a woman, I would say it's like, you feel this extra layer of having to defend yourself. Um, and so we were like, what if it's a place where it's not mandatory, but we would love for everyone to come up and cosplay. And the music's going to be fire. Like we want to make sure that it's accessible and it's promoted towards like essentially black people and people of color. Um, and then add in the queer element as well. Like just make a safe space across the board because also within like nerd culture, like you need to carve out places that are not misogynistic or racist <laughs> um, and yeah. you know homophobic. And like, it's, it's really hard to think about all the extra layers that you have to think about just to go outside and enjoy something that you love. Um, so adding all of those in, we were like, oh my God, we just don't know anyone that does this regularly. Like we know a lot of parties that are attached to cons, but we don't know anyone that just does it on a, on a, like a regular basis in the same location. So it just made sense to us that we were like, it doesn't exist. Like, why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah. I remember when I saw it, I was like, this is amazing. Like what? <laughs> Like, I was like, it's twerking. Like, I love twerking. I love hip hop. Love Sailor Moon. And I'm like, I need to be here. Like, this is every, this yeah. is me. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Seeing Queen Barrel twerk, which we had, it was, it, you know, like, which was like our really good friend Jay, um, mm -hmm. who would, who would actually come to all of our parties as a different villain. And she committed to that theme and we loved her for that. That's um, amazing. Shout out to Jay. Yeah. But it was like, <laughs> yes, like we, we were like, oh. People want to twerk and they want to do it in outfits. We need to give them yeah. access to this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. People need it. <laughs> yeah. And also shout out to therapy. <laughs> mm -hmm. God bless. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I think just like I said, like it's like hip hop is twerking to Sailor Moon. I was like, and I get to support women of color. Like there's, there's nothing more I could want in life, honestly. It's nothing more. Um, especially when guys started doing those flyers, like the mistransformation of Usagi Tsukino. Oh my god. I like saved that so quick to my phone because I was like, I love Thorn Hill, like one of my favorite albums, and I was like, this is genius. <laughs> it was, that so was yeah, that was that's like one of our best like marketing like uh, yes. Yeah. Like we had so for our logo, we actually worked with this phenomenal artist called Christian Thomas. Um who was doing a lot of art for my partner Omar for Black Nerd Problems and, and random commissions that he wanted. And so we approached him to do the logo and he did a phenomenal job. And then I can't even remember hijinks where the idea came to do up like predominantly like 90s hip hop album covers and yeah, films. Yeah, just like pop 
pop culture, 90s hip hop yeah. uh, culture. Right. And so we were able, and I mean, I think the plan in the future is that we want to work with like a variety of different artists and then like offer one, like a different artwork for every party. Cause that's also what we feel like flyers these days. Like there's not a lot of, like, even though it costs us money, like putting effort into the flyers and designing something so cute, like, all right, you're listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I loved it. Yeah. My literally, um, my I had a podcast before this kind of was on hip hop and my um co host, the Wilsden, sent it to me. He was like, Tell me the truth, you created this, right? And I was like, I did not. <laughs> I was like, it's just it's just so me. <laughs> and you're like, no, someone is reading my mind. Who right. are these bitches? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> and why are we why aren't we talking already? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um super awesome, super amazing. Love it. Can't wait to come to a, a party in person I have my cosplay already at like sailor pluto and sailor yes. um moon cosplay so oh, i'm together? ready like no as no one? no oh, okay. oh, I sh- oh that's really cool Could i never thought imagine? of that oh my god yeah gosh. i've been thinking about like taking some of the costumes and like deconstructing them and then like reconstructing them in different that's colors so and good. seeing what that would look like i love that because i can imagine like green like pigtails Mm. Ooh, I never thought of mixing because I love when people mash up like the Sailor Senshi with like other stuff but like Sailor Senshi with each other like I never thought of that that is a really cool concept all right well catch me in that next year (laughs) (laughs) well I mean also depending on how the you know Mm -hmm. the uh, Panda Express uh deceases or Mm -hmm. continues we may or may not be seen by the end of the year so we'll keep you guys posted on that all right well i i will be there with my pfizer in my body yes yes (laughs) ma'am sailor pfizer flowing through my veins i think that's how it works (laughs) i mean that's how we're gonna say it works whatever gets us back outside safely yes exactly love it yeah um and then you guys also started doing cause for cause which like dressing up as a cosplay and like also like with this uh like element of like giving back so how how did that come about yeah um so of course last summer we were all in the streets as we should have been um wearing our masks having to fight for stuff that we shouldn't have to um Mm -hmm. but I I attended a protest and Glenn and I both live in a similar area of Brooklyn and I attended a protest and I was like okay like I really loved the organizers. It was a woman of color and the way that they managed it and they kept everybody safe. Like it was done really well. Um, And Glenn and I, we like, we have DJ friends throughout the neighborhoods and one of them invited us to like this outdoor party they were doing. And we both missed running things together, but it was always this thing of like, well, we're not going to do things for the sake of it and maybe, you know, get people sick. I think that's always the the risk where you're like, we want to bring people together, but if something happens or if somebody gets really ill, like it makes it not worth it. And it's not safe for us to do either. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think we were, we were at one of our friends kind of street situations that they had going on. And we were like, it'd be really nice to do something, but maybe give it a bit more meaning from a community perspective. And I ended up reaching out to our friend, Micah, who leads the crown Heights service industry workers. And we said, we want to do this protest, but the hard thing about protests is that you go out and you're talking about some really heavy stuff and you're marching and then nothing like you go home. Right. And it's like, sometimes I'm like, yes, a part of it is going out and fighting, but sometimes I feel the best fight is us enjoying each other's company and feeling safe and celebrating the fact that we're all just being able to exist right now. Um, And we told her what we do with Sailor Boom Party. And Glenn was actually the one that was like, what if we did it in cosplay? And I think it's a really touchy thing because we saw at the beginning of the protest, like there were people going out dressed up as Spider-Man, but you could see it was purely for attention, you know, and they were wanting to get photo ops. And you're like, we don't really know what the, the purpose of you doing that is. But we said, given that we already had the brand there and that our brand was tailored towards black people and people of color in our community, we were like, but it gives people an opportunity to enjoy existing at the same time as fighting and one thing that Micah pointed out to us was the cops are going to feel real stupid arresting a bunch of sailor scouts 
at a protest. <laughs> like the photo, the photo optics for that would be terrible. That would be. <laughs> I kind of. Well, I don't want anyone to get arrested, but like that. That would be interesting. Yes. <laughs> Maybe Sarah Scout should be arresting cops. That would be. Yeah. <laughs> I would exactly. love to see that. Yes. I mean, the closest we got, I was twerking in front of a cop car. Love it. Oh, so. yeah. She did. Because we had yes. cops. Like, it's not as if we were a huge group at the time, but a lot. what we also were able to do during that was say, we want there to be purpose because I think what we saw last year was a lot of white people coming out and protesting. And we mm-hmm. were like, right, but we want your money. Like, mm-hmm. it's nice that you're out here marching in the streets, but what you need to be doing is redistributing some of that wealth. So we were able to mark out black businesses along our route and stop so that people could spend money with those businesses. Um, And it's not as if we were doing a lot, um, but we had, I can't remember, it was like three to four cop cars just following us for no good goddamn reason. Um, So yeah, Glenn was like, well, all right, if you're here for a show, you're here for a show. And (laughs) (laughs) sometimes I guess we had to give them a show, I guess. (laughs) It was like, all right, well, this is what we do. Like, this is what we do at our parties. We sit here and we twerk in our outfits. If this is what you want to spend taxpayer dollars on watching us do this, so be it. Right. Oh, man, I love that so much. That's such a cool, It was such a cool concept, too, when I saw it. I was just like, ah. And I love how hijinks is always like, yes, but what if we did it in cosplay? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think they're, like, the most important element. So, mm-hmm. like, that was, like actually being able to do something in the physical universe that like Mm. would create change because i think what's happening now is like people are just you know like yes like you know dimple said like getting out in the streets moving yelling the work is important but like if we can also start to incorporate ways of how we're actually like physically like doing something like Mm -hmm. i think it would you know create even more of a change so yeah. yeah it's like all right you can't save the world but you can help the people around you so we had a coat drive as a part of it as well and we had food vendors that came and like they were help, like they were feeding people at the end and basically we finished it um we finished our march by going into prospect park which is here in brooklyn and glenn and i we got a generator we brought a table we brought some speakers and our controller and we literally had a dance party in the park and people that had been marching like feet super tired exhausted like they were like this is the most joy that i've had in the last you know six yeah. nine months like they were like this is like this is something magical and i mean i feel like it has to be a part of what we do as well and i always feel sometimes the biggest protest is just saying hey we can have a great time all by ourselves when we support each other in our community yeah there's so much power in community and like you said like sometimes joy is resistance mm. yeah I love that. Yeah, it looked like fun. And I I just makes me want to go to the next event all much more. (laughs) So here's a few fun questions. (laughs) What is your favorite piece of anime merch that you own? I guess Dimple, you want to go first? Mm, I'm wondering if it it really is just all my outfits. Because... Mm. Yeah, I, I literally have my Sailor Mars costume in two different sizes, depending on what weight I am. Um, I love and, that. Um, Gotta be prepared. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I'm dressing up one way or another. Um, and then I have my Cora outfit, which I like wearing. Um, and then I just recently got, I mean, my favorite thing that I got recently um, was probably my Ochako outfit. Like, it's like a whole bodysuit from My Hero Academia. So at our last party, Glenn dressed up as Deku and I was like, I want something from that show. Mm. Um, so I ended up buying an outfit from there. So, but yeah, I'd say that they're my most prized possessions when it comes to merch or, or um, like things that I own. Super cool. Um, for me, um, I recently just copped this cute little tapestry off Amazon. No particular brand or artist was listed, but I wish I could show you. It's of Aang and Korra back to back. Um, and they're pretty much just doing everything at once. Fire, earth, water, air. And it's so epic. I that really is. need to find the artist's name of this, but it was up on Amazon for like no money. It's really <laughs> cute. <laughs> oh man, I 
I'm gonna like look it up right now. That's so cool. I'm guessing so both of you guys are Avatar fans. I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so yes. good. And especially Legendary. when they all, especially when Netflix was like, "Here, have it all." Thank oh you. Oh my god. We'll rewatch. Yeah. We'll rewatch. <laughs> yes. Oh man, I love. Yeah, that show is amazing. Like, well, both both shows are great. Mm. But yeah, oh, just <laughs> I have to ask you as well. What's what's your favorite piece of merch that you own? Oh man, jeez. Let's see. Um, that is a good question. Oh, that's hard. Right now, it's the Sailor Moon mug that I got because it's like so pretty. Yes. Um, it's like has these gold I just heard kind you of. Pick like... it up. <laughs> yeah, I did. I really did pick it up. It's on my desk. <laughs> like it's so pretty. Like when I got it, I was like, I don't want to drink out of here, so I just put it on my desk for decoration. <laughs> yeah that. and it has like it's like gold and like has all this um different um like what are they called transformation um sticks for each of like the five <gasps> scouts and yes. the moon stick and it's just so it's just so pretty and it's like if i would to use it it's kind of like big so like you can put like oatmeal in it or like even cereal maybe i'm gonna use this to eat my cereal and watch cereal in the morning and that'll be its only purpose yes versatility yeah. But yeah, right now I think this is my favorite. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I'm like blanking out on everything right now. Um, yeah, I have so many. Like I have a, a, one of the like Sailor Moon mangas from like mm-hmm. one of the original times they printed it in the United States in the 90s. Um, yeah, my brother got it for me back then, and I was just like, oh, like I really wish I like. M- kept better track of all the stuff they got me back then when I was a fan because I was like oh all those things like I have posters and all these other things but yeah I think right now it's this mug because I like love it so much it's so pretty and I feel (laughs) like that's the best advice to offer kids it's like really pick something you love and let it be known to every adult around you that you love that because adults like great I'm just gonna buy them that thing that they love like random shit around that and I'm like that's what I'm if I ever have kids that's the advice I'm like whatever you like tell everyone so they buy you relevant things (laughs) that's what i tell everyone like every time like oh what should i get for christmas what should i get for your birthday i'm like anything sailor moon like even if i have it already i will like i want it like like literally like anything like you can get me a keychain i'll be so happy (laughs) well actually in addition to all of that stuff when it comes to specific sailor moon like glenn's actually been really good at getting me a lot of sailor moon shit like Ooh. she got me a watch a sailor moon watch oh, for yeah. my birthday we got these ma- she bought these matching necklaces for us with little Aww. moons um and then oh, they I'm have tr- the um they have um each they have the uh sailor mars and sailor moon um star sign oh that's so yeah cute. so actually and, and now i'm thinking that i'm being a terrible sense you know i need to buy her some <laughs> sailor moon merch yeah, you now that suck. I'm so yeah <laughs> i'm sorry like this is my like aha self-realization moment where i was like is mm-hmm. glenn the adult in my life that's been buying me <laughs> sailor moon merchandise and i just didn't put two and two together <laughs> yes <laughs> i love it i love it so much also i didn't say it earlier i love like your your origin story for sailor moon party super cute better love story than twilight like all of that <laughs> <laughs> it was like like we talked about it for so long and it was really nice to know that we didn't just do it for the sake of it that it it came out really organically and it's something that we both love and it just worked i mean the first party that we ran was definitely a shit show but it was just like getting it out of the way meant we knew what we had to do better and like i i don't know it's it, it it when something feels right like it really feels right and i could not imagine doing anything else with her like it it just works so perfectly. Aww. It's so cute. I love it. Y'all are great. <laughs> <laughs> and um, which sailor century do you think would be uh, the best, make, make the best DJ? Mm. Ooh, we, uh, Uranus. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's super cool. I don't know. She, she would was... like know all the best music. Not even, yeah, like, I mean, not even that she would know music, but, like, it's just, like, her swag. Mm. She just has swag. True. Very true. Yeah, yeah. I, I I could see that for sure. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think who would be the best. Uh, I'm trying to think who has the most sass. Hmm. 
or maybe who's the best because I feel like part of like I, I think the part of DJing that people don't really appreciate or, or like it's that anyone can do it it's just being organized you know what I mean it's like getting all your shit together and like having the music so it's a lot of planning it kind of takes like strategy just to get all your shit so I don't know if maybe somebody like a Salem Mercury like hmm. you know she yeah. just like like you know she just has her shit together in the background like you know she has intelligence like she kind of locks in a lot of the strategy for the girls I wonder if maybe somebody like that like maybe you could use both of those in combo like as a group to to balance off each other I'm not sure yeah I think that's a good option too because like like you said like she's really intelligent I think like she would approach it very thoughtfully yeah you know because mm-hmm. that's the thing that I'm like it's like DJing at the end of the day like and I always explain to people because I even in the year of 2021 or 2020 or how long like we've been DJing without a doubt like we'll always get people that come up to us it's like oh my god you're a girl and you DJ like this is crazy to me and I'm like it doesn't like it's not like it's the 80s where you're carrying around crates of vinyl and you need muscle power to be a DJ anymore. Like, oh, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's like you have a laptop <laughs> and, and nothing's stopping you from getting music together. And mixing in general, like, you know, it takes practice, sure, but it's not rocket science. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's all I tell people. It's like preparation. Like, just have all your shit together and, and be able to read a crowd, like have some intelligence about that part and you can do it. Um, so I... And I so for me i'm like girls would be better djs like no one knows what drunk women want to hear more than drunk women that's a very good point you and know? i can as a as a person who's a drunk woman who's been at parties before with male djs i can attest to that yeah <laughs> it's just like every male dj that i saw would be dressed in the same like they would have a baseball cap on with a white shirt looking like they're having a terrible time and i was like this is not going to do it for me absolutely not And I was like, no, if you're a DJ, like, that's why, I mean, whether it's appropriate or not, hijinks and I are drunk most of our sets. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if it works, it works. I mean, like, you know, I mean, throughout the night, like, the party goes for, like, four four hours, so. (laughs) Yeah, so it's like, you know, but I feel like once we hit our height, it's like, okay, we're playing music that we would dance to right now, song after song, and people, for more or less, are on the same wavelength as us. We would hope that we don't have a party full of sober people. And even if we do, we're going to mix it well enough so that they have a good time too. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you gotta you gotta match your audience's mood. And, you know, that requires some spirits, then hey, you gotta do it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The transformation, sometimes you need that. Oh, love that. Yes, yes. Magical transformation. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Also, Dimple, how did you start? um DJing um so yeah it was back in Australia and I used to go out a lot with my friends and I would I would now I'm looking back at it it was probably very annoying but in my group everyone's having a great time and all I'd be doing was like oh my god I know what the next song is and then I would tell everyone what the next song is and like <laughs> how did you know that and I was like I could hear it like I could hear the beat coming in so um eventually one of my friends was like you should be a DJ. Like you already know all the music and you can pick all the songs. And I was like, Oh my goodness, maybe you're right. Mm -hmm. Um, And then at that time, my sister was opening up a bar and she was paying DJs and they were coming in and they could just not read the crowd. So they would come in and play like techno and house stuff, which I think if you're advertising that kind of night, amazing. If that's all you can play and people are trying to drink cocktails and have a great time, maybe that's not going to keep them on the dance floor. Mm -hmm. So, my sister turned around and was like, I'm so sick of paying these DJs if they can't keep people here. And she, and she already had the equipment and she was like, figure out how to do it. So then I was like, Ooh, okay. (laughs) So then I literally, it's it's kind of a bit self-taught and I just started building the library of all the music me and my sisters would download um, and then got better. And then I taught all my sisters how to DJ so that we would never have to pay another DJ in our bar if we didn't want to, like if we weren't running a special event. Um, Yeah. And then when I came here, like the restaurant that Glenn and I both worked in had a DJ and then I became friends with him and he got me gigs and then I would take Glenn and then I taught Glenn how to, so basically any woman that comes up to me that wants to learn how to DJ, I was like, I will teach you. (laughs) I love that. You're like the DJ goddess, like, just like. (laughs) I was like, one by one, there will be no more male DJs. No, that's not what I say, but you know, we can, we can dream. We can dream. (laughs) One day. Strategy. (laughs) Yeah, just building up a squad, just like yeah. building Sailor Senshi. Yeah, correct. correct. <laughs> <laughs> so one by one, building up this team of of Sailor DJs. Yeah, <laughs> hell yes. Yeah. Um, 
And then what advice would you give to someone who may want to start like a business like Sailor Moon Party? Wow. Um, mm-hmm. Just do it. Um, even if you have no idea what you're doing, you'll find out eventually what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, just by, you know, doing it the first time and then you'll see, oh, this worked. Oh, that didn't work. We would just make adjustments as you go. Um, yeah. And I think specifically with anything creative, like, unfortunately, I think it's a product for our generation that we're taught to turn all of our side hustles into money. Um, and I think it really destroys the reason that people go and do things. So it's not as if Glenn and I run Sailor Boom and make a shit ton of money off it, even though we'd love to. But if the only reason you're doing something is to make money, you will get discouraged really quickly. Like, so I think your expectations around why you do things and what makes you happy, like, Glenn and I would be like, oh my goodness, like, even if it wasn't, let's say even if for some of our parties, we didn't have as many people as we wanted, if the vibe was good, like that would be a better night for us than if we had a lot of people through the door, but there were issues and maybe like the party didn't run the way we wanted it to from a fun perspective. Um, So I would say anything from a creative nature, it's like, you want to make sure that you actually love doing that thing and that thing brings you joy. And typically if you're doing that, the money will come if money is one of your goals around it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think that says it all. I think that's so true. Mm. Um, And then just like Sailor Moon had the Sailor Moon says (laughs) phrase at the end of every episode, what would your guys' phrases be? So um, Sailor Hijink says or Sailor Dimple says, does anyone have one yet? Well, you want to go first? (laughs) Uh, Yes, I can go first. Okay. Sailor Dimple says, down with capitalism, and if you can go and live on a beach, do it. Yes. Okay. Very solid advice. Um, I'm... Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's like, very solid advice, and like, I, I love the charge. Like, yes, down with capitalism. <laughs> yeah, I'm over it. It's not working for us. So, <laughs> who, whoever designed this system, they need to go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> very big mood. Um, I'm going to do this in my best Usagi voice. Yes! Uh, yes. Please! All right. Sailor Hijink says, having trouble taking the perfect selfie? Well, the attention you're seeking does not substitute love. So go look in the mirror and love that bitch first. See you next week. <laughs> that was, that was really dramatic. Okay. That was amazing. And I'm glad you did that because I could not... <laughs> That was so amazing. That like was very, I, very dramatic. Yes. And we're so much better for it, honestly. I hope so. <laughs> I'm better for it. Oh, I'm better for it. That has energized me for the evening. Let me go and look Same. at that. Yes. Right? <laughs> I think I'll love myself more. <laughs> That's why I get therapy, guys. Yes. Give solid advice like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah and then what's next for you both and where can people find you um i mean you can find in terms of the party across all platforms it's at sailor boom party so as we've been like alluding to throughout it we do want like we did not do well throughout the pandemic with the party like i feel like everybody had (laughs) zoom fatigue and at one point we kept on beating ourselves up about it and now we're just like you know what we're an in-person party and we, when we can get back to it, we'll come back at it hard. So mm-hmm. if you follow us on IG and Twitter, like you'll get updates on when we can hopefully do something in person again. Fingers crossed this year, worst case scenario next year. Yes. Um, and for my personals, it's DJ Dimple underscore BK across all platforms. You can find me most frequently on Twitch um, where I game and then I have a DJ set every Saturday night. Yep, yep, yep. Um, we we may do a cute little outdoor situation or something or other somewhere Ooh, in the summer. Please. We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. So look out for that. Um, you can find me, um, at High Jinx. That's you know, like I'm high and then G and X. Um, <laughs> across all platforms, IG, Twitter. Um, and SoundCloud go check out my music I'm also a producer I love doing remixes and yeah Ooh, definitely have to bring you back to talk about that <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so cool and gaming 
Twitch yes. channel. Dimple's but, uh, Twitch channel is yeah. hilarious. Oh my gosh. Oh, and for, for the um, DJ sets on Saturday night, I'm working into it, but I'm trying to start creating like this flawless mix between adding like anime theme songs throughout the entire one. So when it comes to remixes, like Glenn did a fabulous remix of like the Sailor Moon theme song and that gets featured in there. And so that's kind of the goal and what I'm workshopping. So by the time we get back to the parties, like I've had some practice doing it, but yeah, we, we've had good ones. Like we have the Demon Slayer one in there. We've done Food Wars because I freaking love Food Wars and all the music associated with that. So yeah, if, if you're interested in kind of hearing anime theme songs throughout your DJ sets, that's what happens with me on Saturday nights there. Um, and Glenn gets to do all the hype parties outdoors for the moment, and she does amazing. Oh, <laughs> that is supremely cool! And wait, what game are you playing? Um, now? so I'm playing The Last of Us, and it's terrifying. So I'm Ooh. really glad that I do yeah, it with it people kind of giving me advice and helping me in the chat because I could not play that shit on my own. It's yeah, too scary. You need, you need full a full yeah. support system when you're playing that game. Like I've heard that from everybody. Oh my god, yeah. yeah, it's so scary. Like it's just a scary game, and like I mean, it's something different watching yourself like jump and get terrified in real in real time and then going back and being able to watch your exact reaction and knowing that there was no acting that was all real fear <laughs> at, at these monsters on the screen oh, man. <laughs> yeah i started it and i i did not finish because i was like this is a lot oh, of pressure yeah and it's like <laughs> a really like done. sad story like it's it's yeah it's it's a downer mm-hmm. it's like very brief moments of happiness so i have to say that the people that come and watch me do it on twitch and like interact in the chats and give me advice like that's what is helping me get through it and i have no shame in admitting that yeah i mean hey sometimes you need it i yeah no shame at all that is so cool and i'll definitely check out your mixes high jeans because that sounds i'm like sailor moon yes, theme yes it is up there <laughs> oh like her remixes are amazing oh my god yeah i think i think i well i don't know if i heard that one but i heard a few or heard some i heard you mixing like anime theme songs with like hip-hop and other things um at the girl gamer night and i was just mm-hmm. like this is everything <laughs> No one's so, doing it. No yeah. one's doing it. Like we Nobody. were excited. No? Yeah. We were meant to be we were meant to be on the main stage of BlurredCon last year and that was gonna be the whole aesthetic. So, you know, we're hoping that once mm-hmm. it's safe and all the cons come back, that maybe we kick start that off. So people that aren't on the East Coast or near New York, like, might be able to catch us in different cities in the future, like once we can do it safely. Sounds good. I cannot wait for that. Um and yeah. Um, once again, I mean, thank you guys for coming on the yeah, show. Thank you. This was so fun. Yes, we we love we love your podcast. So I am really excited oh, that you had us on here. I love you guys. You guys have like such a great platform. Like I really need to come to this party, and like y'all are both well, like super dope like, as well. So you're really you're going to be on the guest list, so don't you worry. We're gonna we're gonna remind Yay! you. Please do. I, yeah. well, I don't need, probably won't need to. I'm probably going to like be stalking your Instagram. Oh, actually, but. <laughs> actually, just so we have it in mind, right? Mm-hmm. What would be, mm-hmm. if you could vote on it, the the album cover or the movie cover that you'd want us to transform into the Quash oh. Fairless Scouts? Oh, my God. Okay. Maybe... And I'm, I hope you guys haven't done it yet, but like <gasps> Salt and Pepper. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the album, what the name that of the album lovely. is. That would be lovely. That would be legendary. Yeah. Yeah, but when they're in like the like Afrocentric yes, yes. get up. I can see it, it in my mind. I need to yeah. let me get on the internet because we literally have everything at our fingertips. Yeah. Oh, wait. Is it an album cover or was it just a... I think... It might have just been... I guess I it was just for the music just, video. Do, I mean, I feel... Oh, my goodness. You know, maybe yeah. Oh God, I don't. I don't know. Maybe we save that for Black History Month for next year. Because <laughs> oh, I'm cool looking too. at the yeah. exact photo that you're talking about, <laughs> and I'm just like, I think yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, <Hey>. yes, <laughs> yeah. I love it. I think that would be super cool. Well, yay! Oh man, I get oh, to yeah. contribute. <laughs> we're, we're all about bringing everybody. Like it's it's any way people want to like join us in what we do. We want to bring everyone along yes yeah same here 
Um, and yeah, I'm going to sign off. Once again, I'm Victoria L. Johnson, and this is the Sailor Moon Fan Club Podcast. You can find us on any place you listen to podcasts, whatever you're listening to right now, for example. And <laughs> you can find the podcast on Twitter at Mooney's Club and on Instagram at Mooney's underscore club. And you can find me at Miss Old School. It's Old School with a K. Oh, and you can catch me at the next Sailor Boom party, too. <laughs> yeah. And thanks for listening, Moonies. Bye.